Hey, welcome back to Game Tree. Today we're taking a look at the gamer DNA test that we designed to figure out what is your ideal definition of fun. Because let's face it, we're all different, there's a lot of different kinds of games. The predecessors to this test were developed for game designers to figure out what is fun about a game that they're optimizing for. With Game Tree, we're the first ones to take this, elaborate on it, and then apply it to consumers to help people figure out who are the best playmates for games, for friendships, and also what are the right games to be playing based on your matching palettes of fun. So now we'll go through the 10 different kinds of fun that we've identified, talk about what they're measuring, interesting findings that we've had, and also a little history about the things that led up to this test. The Gamer DNA test measures 10 different gaming aesthetics that are each broken down into two pieces. The first one is action, and this is a combination of excitement and mechanical skills. Excitement is adrenalines, explosions, fast pacing, mostly what you imagine, and mechanical skills is things like timing, accuracy, precision, and reflexes. These are really popular and exemplified in games like Mortal Kombat and Doom. The next one is strategy, which is composed of complexity and critical thinking. Now with these, somebody or some game could like one or the other without liking both, but the true aesthetic is maximally achieved when you combine both. When it comes to complexity and strategy, this means many rules, usually a high learning curve, and having a lot of depth. Whereas critical thinking is about strategic decision making, foresight, and analysis. Some games that really exemplify this aesthetic are Europa Universalis, Civilization, and a lot of board games because mostly in general they tend to be strategy games at their core. The next up is Challenge, and this is composed of difficulty and practice. Difficulty is about repeated failure, pushing your limits, and mastery. Whereas practice is about training, watching replays, exercises, and self-improvement. And these are really exemplified in a game like Dark Souls or in most roguelike games where you continuously fail and it actually pays to invest in your skills to beat the game faster rather than just continuing and to play it. Next up is competition, and this is a combination of dominance and status. Dominance is about honing lots of noobs, winning, power, influence, and status is leaderboards, rankings, and levels. And some popular games that really thrive on this aesthetic are Dota, StarCraft II, and in general a lot of esports. The next up is fellowship, and fellowship is about teamwork and socializing. And teamwork is cooperation, helping others, the idea of unity and shared and synergistic objectives. Whereas socializing is about friendships and relationship building and emotional connection itself. A lot of MMOs, for example, WoW and Final Fantasy XIV, many players play because they want this fellowship aesthetic. And it's also very popular in the cooperative board games such as Pandemic and Eldritch Horror. Completion is a combination of achievement and grinding. Achievement is badges, accomplishments, collectibles, and grinding is progression for time spent and also accumulating resources. Games that put these aesthetics together really well are for example Path of Exile or Diablo where you're constantly farming, killing monsters, upgrading loot, and it's also really popular in a lot of Korean MMOs and most mobile games. Discovery is about autonomy and exploration. And by autonomy we mean the freedom of choice, having a lot of paths that you can choose from and a lack of required objectives. Exploration is about procedural generation, having a large world and big diverse set of activities that you can be doing at any time. The Elder Scrolls games, most recently Skyrim, are really big on discovery with the big world that you can discover, as well as No Man's Sky. Aesthetics is about graphics and sound. Graphics can mean a distinct style or just being very close to reality. It can also be about thematic relevance and attention to detail. Sound can be atmospheric, voice acting, sound effects, or music. Board games with lots of high quality miniatures are akin to the graphics as they're about the aesthetics of a game. When it comes to the actual graphics, you could be on Star Citizen's end where they're very realistic and high quality, or on the Bastion's end where they're very thematic but also high quality. And especially in a lot of artists, it's actually the look and the feel of a game that is the main draw for them to it. And then on the sound side, we have, for example, Faster Than Light, which is famous for its soundtrack. Expression is a combination of artistic creativity and roleplay. By artistic creativity, we mean having a lot of variety and options and the ability to be unique. And with roleplay, we mean being very immersive, make-believe, and choose your own adventure-esque. These are really well exemplified in The Sims, Second Life, Minecraft, and Dungeons and Dragons. The last one is story, and this is a combination of characters and lore. Characters can be really interesting, engaging, believable, memorable, and lore is about backstory and world building and history and setting for its own sake. Games that thrive on story as a main aesthetic are The Last of Us and The Walking Dead, as well as The Witcher is very famous for its story. Then you have a game like Overwatch, which has very memorable characters, but is lighter on the lore. 
Now I'm going to share some findings with real data that we've acquired over a large sample size and time. Now bear in mind that a lot of these correlations and people about to describe are not universal. I'm just sharing some cluster samples and correlations. So one thing that we discovered is there's a cluster around story, aesthetics, and expression. And you can see this in a lot of RPGs, for example. And that's actually at odds with another cluster of competition and challenge, which you'll see in a lot of esports or Counter-Strike, for example. So you're not going to see quite as much crossover between these groups, but it can happen as all sorts of things exist in the gaming industry. We also had an interesting discovery where competition and discovery are more at odds with each other. Because with competition, you tend to be very goal-focused, you want status and dominance. And with discovery, that tends to be more laid back without objectives. So surprisingly or not, there's a negative correlation there. We also discovered that completion and discovery go well together. And indeed, that is the case that these are very commonly put together in games, whereby you usually get rewarded via completion for your discoveries. The last one to share is that there's a correlation between fellowship and discovery. A lot of this could be attributed to maybe MMOs or things like WoW, where you're going in a big world with a group and you're kind of having your own adventures. Even Dungeons and Dragons is very strong on doubling down with these core aesthetics. So while the idea of measuring what are the types of fun has existed for game designers, we at Game Tree are the first ones to ever turn the lens onto consumers to help them find out playmates and the games that they should be playing. The first iteration was called the Aesthetics of Play, and it was invented by a lot of the world's top game designers working together to figure out what is fun. And they originally had eight different kinds that they'd identified. If you want to learn more about that, there's an extra credits YouTube video that's really entertaining that I'll link below. Taking it further, Quantic Foundry, who also does a lot of cool research on gaming, developed their gamer motivation model. And in this, they expanded it and added a few more attributes. So by standing on the shoulders of these giants, Seeing spots that we didn't quite agree with, and stuff that was generally missing, we developed our own gamer DNA test. Many hours of Red Bulls and philosophical discussion, Cheetos, finally paid off to bring you the test that we have today. If you want to learn more about your exact definition of fun, then you can download Game Tree or go to a link below and take the gamer DNA test yourself. It might surprise you. As an example in myself of how this is useful, is years ago I bought The Witcher. It's rated as one of the best games ever made. But one of its core aesthetics is story. And I thought that I like stories because storytelling with friends is fun, movies, books. But I've learned after we've developed this gamer DNA test that it's not actually one of the reasons I play games. So despite the popular appeal of The Witcher and how much I want to like it, it ended up being a huge waste of time and money for me that now I would know ahead of time. So I really encourage you to take the test thoughtfully and enjoy the fruits of your unique identity with a little help from Game Tree. If you guys have any questions about this framework or even any ideas to improve it or references to other cool stuff to research, share those in the comments below.